we've got these three pillars, uh, which are people, planet and profit. And we believe that if we are not um, doing well in all three of those together, that we are not a proper business. So if we're making profit, but our people are not doing well and we're not looking after the planet, it's not great. If we're looking after the planet, but we're not making profit, we become, you know, not a viable business for the future. So the key thing for us is that put our people first make money and look after the planet. So wherever we have a center, we say that we want to leave that location in a better state than we started. So if that's more educated people, more jobs, more money, whatever that be, we as a business want to make sure that if we have an office in Sofia, that you know, in years to come, we have actually contributed um, to the ecosystem and to the environment and uh, to the people uh, of Sofia. Hello there, aggressive community. My name is Elena and I am an innovation reporter. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Glyn Blaze, Group COO at Amdaris in Bristol, UK, as well as Vesela Nikolova, Center Director of Amdaris in Sofia, Bulgaria, about the opening of the Bulgarian office. Amdaris is a software development company founded back in 2009 in Bristol, UK. The company has of four delivery centers in Moldova, Romania, Ukraine and Bulgaria and their team is uh, focusing on reducing risk and maximizing impact. Today we get to discover more about Amdaris 2022 goals and plans and how will the Sofia office develop. Glenn, so this is uh, for you. What motivated Amdaris to choose Sofia, Bulgaria to open the new office? We already had um, offices in uh, Moldova, Romania and uh, Ukraine, as well as our head office in Bristol and an office in Dubai. So we were looking at uh, another European city close to where our offices were. And we were looking for a, a, a tech city which was close to uh, Romania um, and which was viewed as a, sort of a growing tech hub. And uh, Bulgaria came up and Sofia became the place that we wanted to come to. I think what um, won it for us with Sofia is that um, Sophia is quite well known for the gender diversity within tech. So I think the, the stats that we looked at were about 33% of the um, tech population were women. We've been quite committed as a business to women in tech in the countries that we operate. So that was quite, um, uh, quite an important aspect for us. And then I think um, as, as much as tech continues to be like one of the fastest growth areas in a number of European cities, you know, we've seen it in Poland, we've seen it in Romania. Bulgaria was always coming up on the list in terms of uh, a fast growing technology technology pool, but also with a, a, a good number of graduates who are coming out of universities with top tier education and also having English as a second language. So for us, a lot of that all fit together. And then I guess the icing on the cake for us was that what we look at is countries whereby um, there is a good tax so I suppose tax incentives for us to have so that our people can um, not only be looked after well, but can earn well for them and their families. So all of that together uh, made Bulgaria and Sofia as a city um, a key location for us. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> so, Andaris was launched back in 2009 from my research. What have been the biggest achievements so far? What would you like the community to know? In terms of achievements, that along the way, there have been numerous achievements. Let's say, for instance, we look at, like, from a growth perspective, for us personally, um, growing as a business from a, a business that started in a, in a small room to a business which is now 500 people, that was great. Um, we've worked on a, a lot of transformative projects, um, whether that be in health tech or ed tech. You know, we've done a lot there. I think if we look at the, 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 the time that we've been as a business over the last 12 years and the one defining sort of techno technological project that we've worked on is a, a project that we did with a client called Pearson. We had a big team there and essentially we were part of the way in which the uh, digitization of the, the, the exam schooling in the UK was um, reformed and changed. So now across the whole population of the UK, um, as children do their exams online, um, the application and the platform that they use was built by Amdaris. So if you think about the millions of children that there are in the UK, they are all touching part of Amdaris' work as they go through their lives. So for us, you know, that's a huge um, achievement. That's cool. I mean, I, I got goosebumps. Awesome. Congratulations <laughs> for, for building such an amazing um, company and um, team and project. Um, 
what are the most um, interesting engineering problems developers can solve by the company? Would you? I would like to build up on that example and share if you can share with us more. We are a, a, a digital transformation client, and it, it, it happens that we um, do software development for our clients and enable them to transform. So. You can imagine that over the last, I suppose, five, 10 years, there's been a move uh, towards digital transformation. The last uh, two, three years, even through the pandemic, you've seen this accelerate. And, you know, um, we've heard uh, clients like Google um, and Microsoft talk about that we have done, you know, sort of two years um, in tech, uh, mm -hmm. has, like 10 years has been crammed into like two years in terms of advancement. For us, you know, um, we're, we're bringing in a whole range of different projects, you know, from deep, te deep tech to the sort of health tech projects, which are sort of changing um, the world. I think there's really um, some interesting projects we've got with like sort of femtech and um, health clients who are, are bringing out using technology to solve lots and lots of um, health problems that people have had. So, you know, being in a team and on a project that's actually going to change the quality of life for people around the world is, you know, pretty amazing. Then there's the other side, which is sort of the futuristic side, where we've got clients who are saying, right, OK, what is the future of um, in-car in driving or in-car entertainment? What is the future of payments? What is the future of um, us um, not using our hands to touch anymore, you know? Um, and those type of projects, you know, they're sort of green field where people are imagining something and are involved in a project whereby actually today um, people aren't using that type of technology. But in the future, potentially, um, they, they're, they're, they're creating technology that's going to be used um, in the future. And then you've got other things, you know, in terms of um, data science, I think. Um, you know, data has been a really interesting uh, topic for, 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 for a long time, but the, the, the onset of data science and the way that we're using data and how data is changing organization, changing governments, um, changing even uh, the military um, mm -hmm. is really interesting. So for us, we've got clients across multiple projects um, from, you know, the, the real sort of deep tech and data to things that aren't even happening now, but happening in the future. And people can be a, a, a part of doing something that, you know, is going to actually change the world. I think just lastly for me, um, one of the big things for me was I was, before um, joining Andaris, I was actually a client um, of Andaris. So I had a startup called Northstar, which was uh, a data analytics platform working with sort of global CRMs. Um, and Andaris came in. And one of the key things that I gave them as a brief was about creating a look and feel which was um, uh, lean inable. You know, I, I wanted a look and feel where someone opens up this application and before they even know what the application does. They have this feeling of wanting to buy it or wanting to engage with it. And they did a fabulous job of that. And with me and with a number of other clients, they probably are the pivotal, um, the, the, the pivotal organization that took us from a startup um, to a sale because of how they, um, because of how they interacted. And for me, um, working with them in that capacity for six years meant that uh, when I decided, when the business sold and I was thinking about what do I do next, it was a no-brainer to come and join the uh, the happy crew um, at Andaris. Thank you so much for that. Oh my God, that's such a cool story. I didn't know that you were you were a client first. Awesome. So, as I see here at Vesela, I imagine the impossible with Andaris. Like uh, Glenn has already introduced us to um, solutions that will not will be used in the future. Are not used now. So imagine the impossible with Vesela now. <laughs> but, um, sharing the baton at Bulgaria oh, Absolutely. Uh, Amdaris has achieved so much uh, in all countries so far. So we really want to implement that in Bulgaria and really bring the Amdaris culture to the uh, Bulgarian ecosystem. I think that would be amazing and people here will really enjoy it. Yes, so that's what uh, we wanted to, to discuss more about. Can you tell us uh, the, this culture, the business culture, the team culture, and how will you, uh, both uh, both of you will ensure the passing of the leadership baton, how they say, between England and Bulgaria? Yeah, the culture is probably my favorite thing. That's actually the reason why I, I joined Andaris, uh, because when I first met Glyn and Andy, actually, uh, I wasn't even offered uh, a space yet here in Amdaris, but we were discussing, we were talking, 
And what really struck me was that uh, everything that I said, it was heard uh, from the other side. Uh, Glenn was really listening to me and he was writing down. Uh, they were really appreciating uh, information from the outside. And I really thought, okay, these people do not know to pretend everything, to know everything, although they apparently know a lot. <laughs> they still are open to ideas. They're open to suggestions and they really are aware that the world is different in every country. And if uh, in Romania, they're doing it this way, in Bulgaria, we can add something from the culture here in Bulgaria. But after all, we act as one. So if you go to Amdaris in Romania, if you go to Amdaris in UK, if you go to Moldova, it's, it's all the same. Uh, you, you have the spirit that uh, the culture is one and the same in, in all of the places. Uh, uh, you have different people, but uh, all ideas are just um, building as one and uh, adding to, to a great, a great spirit. You have a helping hand everywhere, every time. Uh, I think every day I'm talking to people from at least three countries. Uh, which is amazing. You have all that cultural diversity and you always have a helping hand, really. Uh, if I need a help for some, from someone, then there are three people coming to help me and that's amazing. I really like uh, having a team which is really supportive and collaborative and uh, that's something that we want in Bulgaria too. And uh, bringing that uh, leadership, as you mentioned, from, from uh, UK, from, from the other centers also, uh, this is already happening. I think on my fourth day when I started, I was actually on my first uh, trip with the, with the guys from Amdari. So I already met them in person. I, I felt what the culture is. Uh, I could ask all of my questions and they could share all of their experience with me. So this is something that's happening. We have uh, our internal summits. We have our uh, meetings. We have uh, different events, team buildings, after work sessions and uh, drinks. So I think it's, um, yeah, you cannot, even if you want to miss that uh, international spirit, you can't miss it because it's there. <laughs> Thank you for introducing us to the culture. It sounds amazing. So what types of, of people have the best chance of being successful at Amdaris? I think that will be the smartest people. As Glenn mentioned uh, previously, we have such an amazing, uh, such amazing projects and clients. And uh, we really need the smartest guys. And uh, by this, I don't mean the people with uh, years, tens of 20 years of experience. I mean, I mean people who are uh, motivated, who are ambitious, who want to be challenged, uh, who have a dream uh, of software development, who have a passion for software development. And mostly I would say people who, who really appreciate working in team. Uh, because in the last two years, it was a bit of a, a there was a bit of a change in the working um, type. Uh, so people now work more from home, but we, we think that this is actually, there is, it's missing something if you only work from home. You're missing from the culture, you're missing from everything that you uh, can add to your development, to career development, only from the work perspective, but also from the social perspective. So we really want to, to gather people in the office to really add something to the, the career development and uh, to commit to, to clean that uh, stress and that uh, burnout that was um, rising in the past years due to the work from home. So this is something important for us and we're really looking for the people that want to be present. My final question, and then I'm done. I'll, I'll let you uh, gather the, that amazing team. Uh, what are the goals of the Bulgarian offense this year? We are really ambitious. Talking from the business perspective, we really want to grow fast and big. Uh, by the end of the year, we want to be 40 plus people, even more uh, if possible. We just uh, want really great talent here in, in the office. We really want to bring that uh, spirit when where people feel like they're not going to work, but they're rather going somewhere where, where they can build their skills, where they can share their passions with other like-minded people, uh, where they can really do it for themselves and for, for the planet around them, not just for the work. And uh, this is already happening, at least from my personal feelings. I have that feeling and I really want that other people who join the, the, uh, the center here in Bulgaria to, to, to have it. Uh, something else we want to do is have the internship program, which is uh, already happening in the other centers. So uh, to really add something to the ecosystem in Bulgaria, not just uh, having the space for that talent, but creating new talent and growing that pool of talent here. Uh, this is something amazing that's happening and I think uh, from the feedback of other internship programs, people are really, really loving it. 
Um, what we also want to do is uh, to have the culture from Andaris here in Bulgaria, really have what uh, was already achieved and really bring it to the Bulgarian people. I believe that uh, openness for idea and for um, opportunities uh, will be, that will be given to people will be really appreciated and we can have amazing uh, ideas here from the people in Bulgaria. And uh, yeah, I think uh, something else would be the satellites. Uh, we know and we are aware that uh, the talent in Bulgaria is not only based in Sofia, we have technical universities in other cities. So this is something in the long-term perspective that we want to open some centers outside of Sofia too, like Varna, Plovdiv, and other places that we find talent that wants to join us. Thank you. Um, ambitious. You mentioned ambitious, and I wish you all the good luck. Honestly, it sounds amazing. Now it's it's my it's a question that I, I ask all the time because sometimes I might not get all the 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 questions. I I might not get all the information. And if you have something to to share with the community here in Bulgaria that will check this video out, what would you share? Yeah, I can just add that we're really really looking forward to all of the talent and guys that uh, will join us to create something great and to really uh, add to each other uh, really help each other grow ourselves and um, really build great great software here together yeah and i think one thing i'll add and this is just sort of summing up what vessel has said is um we've got these three pillars uh, which are people planet and profit and we believe that if we are not um, doing well in all three of those together, that we are not a proper business. So if we're making profit, but our people are not doing well and we're not looking after the planet, it's not great. If we're looking after the planet, but we're not making profit, we become you know, not a viable business for the future. So the key thing for us is that put our people first, make money and look after the planet. So wherever we have a center, we say that we want to leave that location in a better state than we started. So if that's more educated people, more jobs, more money, whatever that be, we as a business want to make sure that if we have an office in Sofia, that you know, in years to come, we have actually contributed um, to the ecosystem and to the environment and uh, to the people uh, of Sofia. Thank you for watching. I am Elena and at the Recursive, we aim to provide constructive reporting on the progress of the local innovation community in Southeast Europe. Until next time, I invite you to read the stories that shape stories on our website. And don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to never miss out on everything we do here.